Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. How are we today? Well, I was going to give it a few minutes, let some people get on. I did post uh, something over on the community board that we were going live because I had several people tell me they were not receiving the live stream notifications. I do hear, though, that that's kind of a YouTube thing that happens with a lot of people. So I don't think it's anything that any of us are doing wrong. It's a glitch. Hi, Miss Vicki Vale. How are you doing? Hi, Phyllis. So today we are here. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Lori. Hi, Abby. Hi, the best mama bear. How are all you guys doing? So today we're going to talk about Miss Sue Opper, who has done an amazing job in Waukesha. And she, I'm not going to do a bio of her history. I think what I wanted to do is just kind of, let's watch her closing arguments first. And then we're going to watch Darrell's response to her uh, in his sentencing, like his last speech, so, so to speak. And then we'll go and we'll watch her response after the trial is over with. She is the bomb diggity, Lori. I love her. Well, thank you, Dee Dee. How are you doing? Okay, here we go. Well, first we'll start with closing arguments. Oh, hold on one second. Mr. Brooks, do you have an objection? Nothing's... I thought I was supposed to. I thought I was supposed to be unmuted. You are now. All right, uh, Attorney Offer, you may start. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, everybody. Kind of nice to stand here in the middle of the courtroom. You know, all week or the last three weeks, they shoved me at the end of the table because I'm the lefty in the group. It's nice to be able to look at you all and say thank you. Truly thank you, each and every one of you. I want to express our sincere gratitude from the prosecution team, myself, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, Assistant District Attorney Zach Wichell. There's no one in this courtroom that does not realize the sacrifice that you've made serving your community in this very important task. You've put your lives on hold I don't even want to hear from your bosses. Thank you. You've watched these proceedings and you've noticed as we sit at our prosecution table, we don't have a client at our table. But rest assured, we do represent someone. We represent the people of the state of Wisconsin. It's an entity. I can't bring it to the courtroom. People enact laws. People want to feel safe. People have representatives in Madison or Washington, D.C. that set standards, rules that we all are expected to live by. And when those rules are violated, prosecutors step in and enforce the law. I love that she just said... <laughs> It's an entity. I can't bring it to the table. <laughs> Daryl Brooks does not represent anybody. He does not have a client. Daryl Brooks is the client. Daryl Brooks is the defendant. The state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff. It's really that simple. And it's consistent with any other criminal case you've ever heard about at any other time in any other jurisdiction it runs the same no matter what state state or federal i'm going to ask you for your guilty vote at the end of my comments it's up to you i can't tell you to do anything 
except I'm going to say one thing to you that I wholeheartedly ask you to obey. Attorney Upper, I'm sorry for the interruption. Your objection, sir? A mischaracterization of who I am and the way it was said. Uh, I feel like it, it was talking down. All right, your objections noted, it's overruled. The state may continue. Uh, I don't think she should be able to give her closing arguments. I object to that. I don't like the way she's talking down to me. <laughs> Who was it in the chat that just said something about going on vacation? Or they needed, the, oh no, they weren't, they were ready to get the heck out of there. I just read that. Who said that? And now I can't find it. Anyway, my point is that. Didn't she take a vacation? Didn't Sue go on vacation like right after this was over with? I think she did. And I think that the rest of them probably said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and give you one too. When I get back, you take your vacation, all right? You must not, not, not consider anything about Daryl Brooks other than his conduct in downtown Waukesha on the evening of November 21, 2021. Nothing Objection. he's done before that. Objection. Nothing he's done since that. Good gracious. Go back to that deliberation room. Please obey Judge Doro. Confine your comments to his conduct on November 21 of 21. Is he guilty of the 76 counts that he's been charged with? That and solely that should be your topic of discussion. So what are the charges against Daryl Brooks? Thank you for your patience in listening to the jury instructions. They must be read for each and every count. But sadly, they can be summarized very quickly like this, the actual counts. Counts one through six are first degree intentional homicide while armed with a dangerous weapon. Counts seven through 67, first degree recklessly endangering safety while armed with a dangerous weapon. Counts 68 through 74, hit and run causing death. Counts 75 and 76, bail jumping and count 77, battery. Should be guilty just because he got so many charges. Mr. Brooks, what is your objection? Um, I have 76 charges, not 77. So let's get that straight for the record. It's a mischaracter it's, mischaracterization of the charges. Uh, that is correct. It is uh, sustained. It should be count 68 through 73, I believe, and then 74 through 75, and then 76. Thank you, Your Honor. She, that look that she's giving right now, she's like, oh, yeah, unfortunately, so he's right. <laughs> and he doesn't want to be talked down to because he doesn't want anybody to make him look bad. He can do that on his own. Thank you very much. I do apologize for my math skills. <laughs> 68 through 73, <laughs> 74 and 75 are bail jumping and 76 is bad. I apologize for that mistake. We're going to talk about counts one through 67 in detail. Counts 68 through 73, hit and run causing death, in my opinion, are easily summarized as this. He never stopped. Never. Bail jumping, he was out on bail for two files in Milwaukee County, facing felony charges there. He was ordered to not commit any further crimes. If you believe he can, uh, was involved in any of the conduct charging counts one through 67, you should find him guilty of bail jumping. Battery, that relates to the split lip and black eye suffered by Erica Peterson. We told the story kind of backwards. We started with the battery for background.
First degree intentional homicide. You've seen this in our opening statement. You've heard it from Judge Doral. Did Daryl Brooks cause the death of the victim, a victim? Did he have, I'm sorry, did he act with intent to kill, meaning either the mental purpose to take the life of another or was aware that his conduct was practically certain to cause the death of another human being? Count one, Ginny Sorensen. Count two, Lee Owen. Count three, Tamara Durand. Oh, I got, I got. Count four, Jane Kulik. Thanks. Count five, Bill Hospel. <clears throat> Count six, Jackson Sparks. Those are the individuals who lost their lives because of the conduct of Daryl Brooks. From there, we go to reckless endangering safety. What is that? In this case, it means that through his reckless driving, he endangered the safety of other people. And he did so demonstrating utter disregard for human life. Now, behind me is State's Exhibit 15. It's also on the PowerPoint. If you choose, you may have this chart with you in the deliberation room to help you walk through each of these counts if you find it helpful. It's up to you. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But it will be available for you if you ask for it. And it'll take you, as we did in our presentation of the case, right down Main Street and address all the counts that were involved, all the counts that were charged. To prove reckless endangering safety, and I'm just gonna go back one slide, nowhere do you see there that we have to prove any degree of injury to anyone. Never once did Je Judge Doe instruct you that somebody has to be physically injured. Now, Detective Casey told you that was the standard we use in deciding of all these hundreds of thousands of people who is included in these charges. And a decision was made by the prosecution team to include people who were physically injured to be efficient in our prosecution. And so everybody up and down the street, I would argue, had their safety in danger that day. I didn't charge 5,000 counts. We selected 60, 61 counts of people that we can identify by name in Exhibit 15 that were injured by the conduct of Mr. Brooks. Those are the people in green, people in red are the fatalities. And we presented this case to you in much the same fashion that is presented here on Exhibit 15 as to how the injuries occurred going down that street. So we are absolutely held to our burden of proof and the elements for each offense that Judge Doro instructed you on, but we are not required to prove any injury to anybody. The question is, was their safety endangered by his reckless conduct, his reckless driving? Now, some of the groups, it's pretty easy. They walked in a formation and you can get a photograph or a diagram and you can kind of see pretty easily who was located where, right? And you can think back to the videos that you've seen for each of these groups and remember, and you'll see them again, the path of the vehicle is it went through each of these groups. This is South Band, of course. All of these names that are being displayed on the PowerPoint Exhibit 21 are on Exhibit 15 in green for Waukesha South Band. Pretty much the whole left half of the formation 
was endangered by the safety of Daryl Brooks driving up the side of that band. The extreme dance team, it's a little difficult to read, but again, this chart was marked as an exhibit. It's exhibit number 33. If you want it, you can have it in the jury room. The names on this chart will match the names for the extreme dance team on States Exhibit 15. All of the girls that were struck and injured as they marched with the extreme dance team, plus some people on the back that were handing out candy or serving in support roles as the uh, unit made its way down the street. The dancing grannies. States Exhibit 54, the formation that they marched in, who was located where, and your recollection of how that SUV zigzagged through that group. And you can just see the names and match it up to who was injured and killed versus who wasn't. Now, one of the big things in this case has always been why did this happen? What was he thinking? Why did he do this? Again, those are things I don't necessarily have to prove to you. His intent, I do have to prove. And I submit without any doubt, there's overwhelming evidence that this was an intentional act by Daryl Brooks and an act of utter disregard for human life. I say that for these reasons, folks. Number one, first and foremost, just stop driving. Yep. That's it. It's really that simple. Not one person had to be hurt that day if he would have just stopped driving. Did Mr. Neal bring your instructions? Um, you specifically, can, I'm sorry, can can I be heard? Your objection, oh, yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know if I was on mute or not. Um, You're not. You, you specifically said in your jury instructions that intent cannot be, you can't look into someone's mind, I think is what it says, oh, to find goodness. intent. So how could that be characterized as someone knowing for sure intent or not knowing for sure intent? You're making an argument. You'll have an opportunity to do that later. Your objection's noted. It's overruled. The state may continue. I apologize. We, we showed you at the very beginning. Remember, our first witness was Sergeant Wanner. I'm surprised he apologized. The man apologized. Who was the incident commander for the parade. We put up another map. I think it states Exhibit 1. You can have that if you want it. Shows all the positions of all the police officers and the reserve officers the barricades, the squad cars. How do I know it was intentional? Because even Daryl Brooks told Detective Carpenter, I could tell something was going on downtown. No reasonable person would drive upon this area, see the squads with their red and blues on, see the officers in the street with their bright yellow vests, see all the people milling around, see the pl the floats lining up and the participants getting ready and not know to drive safely, slowly and obey officers. The barricades help us prove it was intentional. The police presence help us prove it's intentional. The parade participants help us prove it's intentional and the parades help us prove it your objection, sir? Oh my goodness. Speculation as to what the alleged defendant said he saw. It, sir, it was never your objections noted it's overruled. This is closing arguments, not the evidentiary phase. <laughs> Go ahead, so sir. How can, so how can speculation be made to what was saw? If your objections noted to? it's overruled. Continue, Attorney Opera. Honking the horn. Quite interesting. And Mr. Brooks asked so many witnesses if they heard the horn honking. Some of them said they did at the beginning of the parade. Yeah, I heard a horn honk. Most of them 
said they didn't. The horn honking cuts both ways, folks. If he's honking his horn, that means he can see something's in front of him. That means he knows there's an object in the road. You can rely on your common experience in your affairs of everyday life. If you see something in the road and you want to alert the other person to your presence, you will honk. But you do not have the green light to then just keep going if they don't move. He knew they were there. Intent. Mm -hmm. I've skipped one. I'm sorry. Going back to my street number 15, I failed to include the uh, Catholic community. That's just one of the photographs showing the people that will match up to exhibit 15. Can we put a charge on him just for stupidity? Is that allowed? From the Catholic community of Waukesha. There's a lot of photographs identifying the people that were marching with that group. The parade started. This is the starting point, or at least near the beginning, right? This is the area. We showed some videos of the groups passing by in this area. We heard testimony from four different police officers standing in four different spots near here, telling of their four different efforts to stop him. Intentional. Sergeant Wanders back here testified that this red SUV blew by me. I waved both arms over my head. I'm in a police uniform. I have an unmarked squad, but I have my red and blues on. And he blew past me. He gets down here to the corner where Detective Casey is standing. Detective Casey runs out into the street, gets close enough to put his hand on the hood of the car. He keeps going. He comes down, turns on the main street, gets in this area of East Avenue to the south and Buckley Street to the north. This is where he encounters Officer Schneider and Officer Buttrin. They each make a separate effort to stop him, and he keeps going. Four police officers. It's intentional. He had plenty of opportunity to just stop anywhere along the way. One of the officers testified to it. I think it was Officer Schneider. This was an accident and he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route after passing all this. And he mistakenly wandered onto the parade route at any point. All he had to do was stop. They could have paused the parade. They could have moved the barricades and escorted him out. He didn't. It was intentional. He went on for four blocks. Four blocks. It was intentional. He reached speeds of approximately 30 miles an hour. That's intentional. He plowed through 68 different people. 68. How can you hit one and keep going? How can you hit two and keep going? How can you hit three and keep going? Didn't phase him a bit. He kept going until he got to the end and there was no more bodies to hit. It's intentional. Mischaracterization of the evidence. Noted, overruled. His conduct when he left the parade route, we'll get into this. His flight, his hiding, his panic, his desperation to run. Get the hell out of town as fast as he could before the cops came. That shows his intent. His interview with Detective Carpenter. Okay, I have a question. How is it that he could 
realized after the fact that, oh, crap, I got to hide the car. I got to get rid of it. I got to get the heck out of here. I mean, we all know that he uh, ran out of gas, and that's why he stopped. But how is it that then after he gets out of the vehicle, it's like all of a sudden he's like, I got to hide everything because now I know I, I realize what I've done. Do, do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, why did any of that hit him when he allegedly, well, no, it's not alleged anymore, when he did hit the first person? I don't understand how someone doesn't stop and go, oh, crap, you know, let me get the heck out of here. But to keep going and going and going and going, I'm just, I know, it's the same question everybody has. We're all buff baffled. I just, I don't know. We spent several hours playing you snippets of that interview. How telling was that? Never once did he say any of these things. Never once did he say, like he told you in his opening statement, it wasn't an ac it was an accident. It wasn't intentional. Never said that to Detective Carpenter. No, he came up with some convoluted story about I got a ride out here from a buddy in a tan Kia, and then I left to go meet Erica, and we got into a fight, and then I went back, and the other guy got into a fight, and he was leaving, so I took off on foot. Absolutely nonsensical story. Does not match up with the known evidence in this case. Overruled. He never I didn't stopped. even state the objection. This is closing argument. She may continue. I'm going to play this slide, which is a snippet from State's Exhibit Number Fifty Three. Go ahead and play with sound, please. <laughs> That was just a snippet that I selected because I thought it really captured the environment that so many witnesses tried to explain to you, right? It's a Christmas parade. People are there with their families, their little kids, their grandkids, their neighbors, their friends, strangers, standing next to strangers. That's what's going on on Main Street. While that's going on on Main Street, this is going on. Remember this? This is the gas station on the corner of Barstow and North Street. While the units are marching down Main Street, entertaining the crowd, Daryl Brooks is driving recklessly. He's enraged. And he's arguing with Erica Patterson. Why is this important? This is important because before he even gets to the parade route, this is how he's driving. He drives the wrong way down North Street and then acts like it's everybody else's fault in the world. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. You may continue, Attorney Opper. When he finally pulls into the gas station, he rolls down his window and yells at the driver who's properly stopped at the stoplight that it's somehow that guy's fault that Daryl Brooks is trying to drive the wrong way down North Street. And from there, the rage continues. We get to this point, State's Exhibit Number 3. Please play. Anyone else sick of this video right here? The video is playing. You can see the pushing match between Daryl Brooks, Corey Runkel, Erica Patterson, and Nick Kirby. 
Watch this. He turns to get in the car, flips up his hood, and goes and gets in the passenger seat. Sorry, I'm sorry, driver's seat. How long are we going to mischaracterize testimony? <laughs> Sir, arguments. I've heard nothing improper. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. You may continue, Attorney Opera. Thank you. They need to know they can nullify. That's it. He drives off onto the parade route. From this moment, right here on Exhibit 15, you're watching it. He's enraged. He's angry. Flips up that hood, and he zooms past Sergeant Warner, past Officer Casey, onto the parade route. Now, there's no doubt for the first two blocks, he does not strike anyone. And as we've discussed, some even said he was driving at a reasonable speed initially. You know, if you think about it, DAs have it so much easier off these days because they have so much video technology. By the time he gets past Officer Butchman and Officer Schneider in this area here of uh, East Avenue, past East Avenue, and clearly, once he gets past Barstow, that's where it starts, right? That's where it starts. Nicole White, our first victim, walking with Remax and hot air balloon. Knocks her over, keeps going, runs up and over the backs of Waukesha South Band. Hits the green children spectating on the sidewalk, keeps going. Runs over Kelly Grabo and her daughter Adelia, walk, walking with Burris Logistics, keeps going, plows through the entire extreme dance team just before the five points, keeps going, hits Deborah Ramirez and her son Isaac spectating on the south side of the street, keeps going, clears the five points area. Hits Jane Kulik, square on, causing her to go up on the hood of the car and then fall off and drives over her body. He doesn't stop. He keeps going. Runs through the kids over by the steaming cup. We heard the parents testify about little Brinley and Kelsey and Owen that were standing there outside the steaming cup. They were struck by the red SUV, driven by Daryl Brooks, keeps going, plows through the grannies in that zigzag fashion, striking most of them, injuring them, killing them, keeps going. Here to the end and goes through uh, Catholic community. The witness, uh, remember Holly Berg, she testified about that um, mobile gas station incident. She said she was standing down here in this area. She said, I saw 15 to 20 people fly in the air. They look like bowling pins. And when she saw the video, she's absolutely right. It's a terrible description when you think these are human beings, but that's exactly what it looked like. I just dropped a poll in the chat if you guys want to check it out. When does the intent exist? Doesn't have to be even for a second. I'm not telling you who set out that morning to cause this carnage. But when he became enraged back here, he didn't give a damn who or what was in his way. He intentionally went on. I'll show you. Motive. I don't know why he did this, folks. I don't know why, other than the rage. He's right. You cannot read minds, neither can I. But the law doesn't require you to. The law gives you a way to reach a conclusion as to what is somebody thinking. And it's right here. 
decided based on his acts, words, and statements, and from all of the facts and circumstances. I've already been through many of them. I want to show you what I mean. Look at this. Was there room for him to get out? This is way back at the beginning. This is Officer Buttrin's squad video. Way back at the beginning. That's Buckley Street here that you're looking at. Look at those barricades. Look at the sparse crowd. And there's Officer Schneider in her uh, yellow fluorescent vest on the left side of the picture, about to run into the street and stop him. <coughs> intent. I'm going to play this video for you because folks, for me, this is where it becomes crystal clear. You watch this video. The first thing you're going to see, if you direct your attention to the left side of the screen is you're going to see him hit Kelly. I'm sorry, Nicole white, knock her to the ground and keep going. Now, if that was the end of the story, you may sit here and say, Madam DA, I, I don't know how you conclude intent from that. Maybe it was an accident. Yes, Cynthia, we're going to be on top of those trials that he has coming up. I've got the live streams already set up on my channel, so make sure you go in and click that bell. And that maybe he didn't mean to do it. But watch what happens in this video after he knocks Nicole White down and tell me this does not prove intent. Please play. watching the left side of your screen. drive over them and keep going oh my goodness that's a still shot of the same thing that's intent i'm sorry to interrupt your objection sir are you kidding me how can you tell the jury what they supposed to think proper argument your objections noted it's overruled yeah. you guys imagine how hard it is for us to even just listen to that can you imagine what it was like for those people that were standing there when all that went down and got to, and and they saw it happen? I would argue that it's uh, I would say that it's improper and I Mr. move Brooks, for a mistrial. I made my ruling. I'm going mistrial. to move you if you don't follow the rule. Exhibit I'm one. Mistrial. Exhibit one fifty two. Clearly, intentional conduct. Clearly intentional conduct. States Exhibit 93. We asked the court to take time to have you go look at this car in person because it's remarkably amazing <coughs> that this damage was caused by human beings. That's intent. This is an excerpt from State's Exhibit 154. Maybe a little hard to see. A lot of that laying in the front part of this uh, photo are shoes. Remember what Dr. Bidritsky said about the shoes and the feet, the scuff marks on the toes and the ankles? Look at all the shoes laying in the street. This is the area at the end when he ran through the Catholic community. All the shoes laying there because of the velocity. Remember, the medical examiner talked about the velocity. It's not just the speed, it's the velocity of power that these people were knocked right out of their shoes. 
you know, I bet a lot of the jurors are already sitting there thinking, gosh, we could have done this on day one and just given you a, a guilty verdict. That's intent. The flight, the hiding, changing his appearance. <clears throat> he had to go through some effort, right? Crawled up in this uh, <clears throat> playhouse, ditched his sweatshirt and his sandal, the other sandal. Seems pretty reasonable. He dropped it when he was jumping over a fence. Changed his appearance. Please play. Excuse me. Intent. What's he running from? What's he running from if he's just a lost guy with no ride back to Milwaukee? What's he running from as there's cops, sirens wailing in the background? Whoops, that was me. So state's exhibit number 130, put that up here quickly. <coughs> Thank you. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, folks. Suffice it to say, after Officer Scolton tried to stop the threat at that intersection at the top, Wisconsin Avenue, and he blew through the barricades there and drove south on West Avenue over to Prospect Court, cutting through the yards and ditching the vehicle on Maple. Heard all the testimony about the commotion on Maple, the eyewitness testimony from Officer Sailors, off-duty police officer who saw this, saw the defendant, Daryl Brooks. He identified him for you in this court. Get out and run from this car and how we tracked him through the neighborhood. And again, the desperation, whether he had to ask or use veiled threats like, I won't hurt you, but I need your phone. He was absolutely desperate to get out of there until he took refuge in the home of Daniel Ryder. Now, remember the interesting thing, folks. None of these witnesses in this area knew anything about what happened at the parade. None of them. None of them were there. None of them were there. So they, some of them tried to help. Some of them didn't. Daniel Ryder did. And it's actually probably a really good thing that he took him in because it stalled, right? It stalled him from keep running, kept him in one place until the cops could close in and get there. Now, Mr. Brooks repeatedly asked witnesses who had just watched their loved ones get struck by this SUV if they happened to catch a license plate. States Exhibit 150, there's the front license plate. Definitely a little blurry, but definitely you can make it out. States Exhibit 151, there's the rear plate. States Exhibit 175, there's Daryl Brooks in his music video with the same car and the same license plate. <clears throat> there's the key to the Ford that was found in Daryl Brooks' pocket. There's no doubt Daryl Brooks is the person responsible for this. Because this man in this picture is the same as this man in this picture wearing this sweatshirt. And again, it's a little hard to see, but you can ask for these exhibits in the jury room if you want. The photograph, you can see this design on the front of the uh, sweatshirt, if you look close enough, this is a sweatshirt from the play set that has Daryl Brooks' DNA on it, according to the crime lab. That's him right there. That's Daryl Brooks driving off into the parade. That's Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. That's Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. 
That is also Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. Oh, I love this. And so is that. Go Sue. And he kept asking people about the tints on the window. Well, guess what, folks? You don't need to see the tints on the window when the windows are rolled down. Oh, yeah. And that there's was clearly one person in that vehicle in every one of these photos. That was a second piece of defense. And it was Batman, the horn. And it's that man. And it's that man. Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., date of birth 2-21-1982, on his identification card issued by the state of Wisconsin. In all capital letters, Daryl Edward Brooks <laughs> capital Jr. letters this is in his pocket. I love it. When they arrested him. So this entire shenanigans that he's presented to you through his questioning of witnesses about I'm not Daryl Brooks and that's my name and I don't know who that is and I don't uh, consent to being called that name. It's just nothing but a distraction. It's Daryl Brooks. It's the man who drove through the Waukesha Christmas Parade and killed people, injured people, endangered the safety of people. Sorry, your objection, sir? Oh my goodness. Uh, Your Honor, with all due respect, I, I would appreciate the uh, the quote unquote uh, language to t what, what does she mean by shenanigans and this and that and the third. <laughs> oh my gosh! Your objections noted. It's overruled. The state may continue. Well, can can she tone that back? Because if that was me, if I would have <laughs> said Mr. something Brooks, like your that, your objection it is noted. It's overruled. These are closing arguments. There's nothing just, improper. It's noted. It's overruled. To, she may continue. I just wanted. I just wanted to be fair. You'll have an opportunity to respond, sir. Please let her finish. So I can, I can rebuttal. I can. <laughs> Go ahead, Attorney Offer. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys. You know, at least she didn't call him a monster, which is what everybody else was thinking. I'm going to conclude my comments with this, folks. I'm going to show you the video, a stitched together video of all. The carnage caused by, and I apologize. It's together. It's together. This is important that you know what he did. It's important that you think about the women like Nicole White and Kelly Grabo and her daughter and Jane Kulik, who were just there with friends and co workers supporting a local business. The teenagers marching in the band, representing, wearing their school colors. It's important. The boys and girls with the Blazers baseball team and their coaches doing nothing more than handing out baseball cards. The young girls in the extreme dance team. Can you imagine how many hours they spent practicing that routine? He drove right through them without a care in the world. Mm -hmm. The grannies dancing their way down the street. Perfect step. Why doesn't she have him on mute so that if he needs to object, he can hold up the sign like he did earlier? Oh, every one of them. Catholic community there, as Father Matt said, spreading the light of Christ in the weeks before Christmas. He snuffed it out. It's time for Daryl Brooks to stop running. It's time for him to stop lying. Yep. It's time for him to be held accountable for his actions. Daryl Brooks cowardly rammed his way through this parade, violently killing and injuring so many people. I'm going to stop talking and play this video, but Please, I ask you to add up the evidence. Use the map. One I'm sorry, 15. You can check off the names. We've covered them all. Walk down that street like we did with you. Return guilty ver verdicts on all counts. Please. Please. Screen back up. No, I need one more. Uh, Yes, please. Go ahead.
Which video is this they're watching? Does anybody know? I haven't even been looking at your comments. I apologize. Well, this is the end of her arguments. I mean, the, the evidence, you guys, if I were to sit here and have to pull up, and I have been putting together some pieces of evidence videos, it's going to be a long video. Hi, Death Nail. Welcome. Oh, you hear the people crying? Oh my gosh. Can he hear the people crying, it, even though he's in that other courtroom? I hope so. Good point, Bubba. Thank you. Before we continue with Mr. Brooks's closing arguments, I'm going to take a short break. Um, I'll rise for the jury, please. All right. We will get back to more sentencing. Um, well, we're going to jump to his response in the sentencing. And then after that, we're going to just listen to a quick media appearance that I wanted to say Darrow. I started to say Darrow, but uh, Sue Opper did. So let's get to this video here. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I trimmed some stuff. I trimmed a lot of stuff out. And the video that I'm about to play of his sentencing, it's just a, sm a smidgen because he literally talked for almost, or no, it might have been, it might have been over two hours. They gave him the microphone. Oh, <clears throat> he's worse than me when he gets a microphone. Happened on November 21st, 2021, was not, not, not an attack. It was not planned. Plot it. This was not an attack. This was not an intentional act. No matter. How many times you say it over and over? It was not. 
I felt a lot of frustration and anger yesterday, not towards any of the victims. It was towards Miss Susan L. Opper. And I won't even throw shots back at her. Again, I choose to take the high road. In spite of the clear language that was used by her, I'm not gonna fire back. I'm not gonna do that. Am I angry? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <clears throat> but so what? When it boils down to it, the whole prosecution team had a job to do. Can't be mad at somebody for doing their job. Um, attorney Basie, Attorney Wichow, I, I respect you guys. Regardless of what you may feel about me, I respect you guys. I really do. I respect you too, Attorney Opera. The difference between the all you all you guys is you attorney opera, I don't respect how you did your job. And I never will. But I refuse to get into name calling. I refuse to raise my voice. I refuse to do any of that. Had every intention to come in here and, 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 and lay into you. out of frustration and out of the fact of feeling that I needed to defend myself by some of the things you said. How you had the audacity to speak on situations that had nothing to do with this tragedy as if you were there, as if you had intimate details, as if you knew everything that led up to those allegations. just by reading the police report. Reading the police report doesn't give you the right to pass judgment on a situation that, frankly, is none of your concern. Honestly, you would think for someone that's been doing your job as long as you have, you would think you would understand that. You would think that you would have some kind of integrity. Even with that, Not gonna bash. Not gonna say anything disrespectful. Not gonna call you 
anything other than your God-given name. As far as the integrity, though. I won't ever be able to wrap my head around um, why you did things the way you did it. Made reference to this being an open and shut case. Open and shut case. Yet you needed a whole team. To prosecute an open and shut case, as you say. And again, no disrespect to Attorney Basie, Attorney Witchow. I feel like they was the reasons why your case had any strong points, not from you. 31 years, you said, well, well, yeah, you did say 31 years that you've, um, You've done this. I don't believe you're that bright. Um, oh my gosh, you just said, I don't believe you're that bright. Is that the pot calling the kettle black? Yet, I respect you having He does, Tony. He thinks he's preaching a sermon. He's off. To take on something of this magnitude uh, for this community. Can't do nothing but respect that. Yeah, there goes the high road. And regardless, when I leave this courtroom, I will have no ill feelings. He has a With thousand anyone. years to think about it. <laughs> I just had to throw that last. <laughs> I think that's so funny looking. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to leave with that last little facial. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about how he was going to take. You know, I, I'm just not going to go to that level. I'm I'm a better person than that. And I was sitting here as he was like, I was clipping some stuff out because I clipped a bunch of stuff this morning before I did this piece. And I was like, you know, it, it's actually, he does. He thinks he's preaching to everybody. He's giving advice to everybody that's listening. He truly is. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I just want to smack his head. Except I didn't say that on YouTube. I don't mean that really, y'all. I just can't get it with y'all. Oh, just one little slap. I'm just kidding. I didn't say that either. Okay. Now let's get to what uh, Sue Opper says afterwards. Oh, I got a screen to share. Mm -mm -mm. He got me all shook up. Yes, first and foremost, you asked for max sentences. You got them on all of them. What what kind of sort of conversations do you have with victims? And I'm curious what you've heard. Um, obviously, everyone is very grateful and uh, uh, very appreciative of the time that Judge Doral took to explain her sentence and explain the reasons why. I thought it was very, very impactful that she read a sentence for each victim by name. That was uh, really tremendous. The victims are very grateful for that, that she... Um, respected and cared about each one of them enough to name them and, uh, you know, basically say to the defendant, you're serving 17 years for this person. You're serving 17 years for that person. So um, a lot of, uh, a lot of tears and happiness, of course. Judge Darrow brought this up that Brooks spoke for more than two hours and she never heard one sentence. She never heard him say that he was sorry to the victims. Right. What are your thoughts on all of that? On, on his, on his speech, on, on him not apologizing? Yeah, I think we all had that same observation of he was allowed to speak freely for two hours and really much of it was irrelevant um, information that didn't help 
she asked them pointedly several times, what do you think I should do? What type of sentence do you think I should impose? And he never directly answered the question. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the lack of remorse, the lack of responsibility are factors she can consider and she definitely did. And it definitely was something our victims all noticed too, of course. What were you feeling when everything came to a close today? Hmm. You know, what Karen just said, he, he, Daryl Brooks never said their names. And, you know, I, I really didn't think about it that way, but he never did mention their names. But to him, they're just they're just people around his world because it's all about him. It's his world. We're all just a bunch of squirrels trying to get a nut. He's just like, it's all him. And everybody else is just playing a character outside of it. Hey, Steve, welcome back. I don't think it's really entirely sunk in yet, um, but uh, a little bit of relief just for our families that they don't have to keep coming back here. Um, we're, we've uh, been very grateful that we were able to get this wrapped up in a year's time for our families and not drag this out for years, which you see so commonly. Um, it was very fortunate. The investigation was so well done, so thorough, so uh, easy for us to just move quickly on charges and move the case along. So um, we're very, very glad about that. Every courtroom is different, but Judge Doyle allowed clapping and applause on those first six intentional homicide charges. Yep. How did you feel? And uh, a reaction like that from the folks in the gallery? Uh, I was not expecting it. Um, and it is very, very unusual. As you said, typically that's not... Um, proper courtroom decorum, but I think it was appropriate under this circumstance because of the relief that everybody felt and the magnitude of the events. It just, uh, it felt right to everybody, I think, including Judge Doro, and, and I think she was gracious to allow it to go on, uh, you know, for a short period of time and then said, all right, let's, let's get the work done here, so. Do you think justice was served today? Yes, I do. I mean, I, I'm very grateful that Mr. Brooks will never be a free man, and, uh, you know, it's the best we can do for our victims, unfortunately, is to hold them accountable and, and have him know, have them know that he will never walk free again and have them know that they have the whole community behind them, not only Waukesha, Waukesha County, the state of Wisconsin, really the, the whole nation. Um, the responses we've seen have just been incredible. So. Yep definitely got everybody behind them and that includes all of us um who said it up here was it vicky that said that i'm sorry you guys i'm so sorry i forget who says stuff and i don't say your names i, I apologize there's a lot of people in the chat right now somebody made a comment do you think Darrell really thinks that he's going to get an appeal yeah he thinks it in his mind are you kidding me if we if, if we jumped into his mind, we'd all get drunk. Can you believe it? Yes, yeah, Southern Law does keep tabs on his appeal. The attorney, let's see what she said. There's another delay in his appeal. The attorney will not get a copy of the record until July and has to go through it. But I see, I thought that he had said to Joanne that that the appeal wasn't looking good. I mean, I thought he kind of already kind of made his mind up that, you know, I, I don't know. I just. And who's paying for him to do that appeal? Is I'm so confused. Yes. You, you know, Judy, it's funny about that. That saying that this trial will forever be taught in law school. And it's. It's, it'll be taught in law school in the oddest way because it's just about how to handle somebody so obnoxious and outrageous. You know, it's not about, it's not about strategy as much. Um, I mean, I, I learned a lot from watching this case because I did not watch t trials all the way through. Probably this was probably the first one that I did that with. So I know I learned a lot from it, but you know, that's me and just not having ever gone to law school obviously y'all know that i'm just somebody with a microphone and a youtube channel he not only thinks he will get an appeal 
but he thinks he will win. You're absolutely right, Vincent. Will he represent himself in the other two cases? Richie, everybody's been on, talking about that, and I'm going to say this right here. I don't think he's going to, unfortunately, for our entertainment purposes, <laughs> because I think he's just realized that he, I think he wanted to jump ship as soon as he realized that he was without an attorney on this last one. I really do think that he had regretted his decision, and I just don't see him doing that. Now, if it's just about him being able to get in front of Erica and have another last look and talk with her, then yeah, maybe that one, maybe that case, I could see it. But that's just my opinion. Uh, so the state has to pay for the appeal. That's bull BS. I caught myself. <laughs> oh, of course, it's the taxpayers. Can you imagine? They should really outsource that stuff to China. <sighs> yes, the state is paying. The state has paid for Durrell. The government has paid for Darrell his entire life. He isn't Richie. Oh, he isn't Richie. You're talking to Richie. Okay. He does, he, Cindy says, yeah, he will against Erica. His lawyer said it is, there's no merit. That's what I thought, John Bubba. No merit on that appeal. And the guy's name is Michael Covey. You guys, I spent all my time lit on this case, literally editing clips and putting stuff together. I don't, I, I'm just going to be honest. I, I, I wish I had more time to research it. Don't say that, Hugh. Hugh says, to be fair, he is only going to stay in prison until the first governor of Wisconsin gets voted out. What? No, they're not going to pardon this moron. There's no way. And Bama thinks he'll fire him at the last minute. Uh, Karen, yeah, we pretty much know he was abusive toward his mom. We don't know if he was physically abusive with her, but we know he was verbally abusive with her. All right. All right. Well, you know what, guys? We've been on for a while, over an hour. So I've got to go do some stuff this evening. Probably be an adult, you know, go to the grocery store. Clean the pool, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I saw that video, Cindy, of him doing that with Erica. I want to thank everybody for being here today. Got a ton of you guys in chat. It's been great catching up. I'm probably going to drop a video tomorrow. <clears throat> I'd love to drop several. Uh, again, I don't like to drop on Sundays. Uh, but I definitely will have another one on Monday. But, yeah. Definitely tomorrow we'll have something, okay? Thank you guys so much for showing up. Thank you for all of your support. I love you guys. And I appreciate you spending your evening or early evening with me. Y'all have a blessed evening and a safe weekend. Be good. <laughs>